Welcome back to another session. I hope you were well. Um, in today's session, I would like to talk about depression and unfulfilled expectations. Um, I think for a small group of people, there is a correlation between the number of unfulfilled expectations that you document or that you keep a record of and the likelihood of anxiety and, and depression. Um, it's no, it's no secret that whatever we focus on, we tend to experience in our lives. Whatever, whatever we focus on expands, um, and therefore we have to learn how to change our focus. Uh, I use this example of two men stand in, in a prison cell, uh, both look out towards the window. One of them sees a beautiful sunset and admires, and is just in awe at this sunset and the other can only see the prison bars, the steel bars that are keeping him in captivity. Same focus, different experience. And so for those two people, what you might realize is that one of them will have an emotion that is disempowering and the other uh, an emotion that is uplifting. Expectations come at a huge cost. You see, we start with the basics. Where do they come from? Well, in order to have a life and in order to interact with people, it's not unusual to find um, that we place conditions, um, whether that be in relationships or whether that be in aspiration. Um, I will do this if I get that, and I will do X if I do Y. In relationships, for example, our expectations are seldom made known to the other parties. We have these rules, and most people do not understand our rules. But we, we fail to realize that it's all in our head, and that even the most well-kept, the most beautiful roses, has a limited vocabulary. It doesn't really say much. Um, and therefore you have to use your mouth and you have to speak and you have to share how you think and how you feel and what you want and what you expect of people. But there's no guarantee that most people have to cooperate with your expectations. People have a free right to choose. They can disregard what you say and they can make mistakes. In any case, expectations is something we see in relationships. Wherever there are conditions, or wherever you have very strong rules about how people, or how the universe, or how nature, um, or how the future itself should interact with you. What you find that comes together with those conditions or rules will be disappointment. The one thing that is constant in life is change. Change is not a negative thing. Change just is. Um, in the Asianic language, they consider change to be danger and opportunity. Uh, and therefore, it depends on what you choose to focus on. And whenever there is change, the outcome might be slightly different to what you hoped it would be. And that's where disappointment comes into the picture, is that we get disappointed where we have conditions and rules. And wherever there are disappointments, we tend to get rigid. Um, we're not fascinated by it. The, the surprise, we're frustrated. And so you see, for some people, it's the relationship starts to actually um, uh, die by virtue of unnecessary reactions that one party or both parties choose to make a focus um, simply because a rule was broken or an expectation was not met. Despite sometimes said expectation or rule not being communicated. And wherever you have disappointment, you have separation, you have destruction, um, uh, leads to dis dissolution, uh, dis dissolution of the, of the relationship or, 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 or the connection with whatever you want. Depression is one of those things um, that is a byproduct. Depression is really a symptom. Um, effectively, it's telling you something is wrong. It's a symptom of an underlying cause. <laughs> That cause might be simply that you have expectations that have not been fulfilled. Unrealistic sometimes expectations that have not been fulfilled. As a, as a matter of fact, let me just 
jump in slightly. The idea that someone can think that the universe has a right um, and must give to them what they wish. And that wish could be something simple. I wish that I will pass this exam. Oh, I hope that I pass this exam. I wish I get married and stay married. Um, I wish I have long life and my family has long life. Um, I mean, the idea that we, the created thing, can look to the creator, whatever that creator might be, and wave our hands towards the heavens and say something is wrong, you made a mistake, shows the height of our ignorance and our arrogance. Uh, two deadly ingredients that make what I consider to be one of the most fatal of all cocktails, arrogance and ignorance. Throughout the session, I have been talking about the fact that rooted in our depression is ignorance. There's something we do not know, but we also have arrogance. The arrogance that we think that we are owed something by the universe, by other people. And therefore, when our expectations are not fulfilled, we move into this spiral of worry and doubt and fear and sometimes anger. And in today's session, perhaps, um, if it's not clear, if I haven't um, implicitly made reference to it, I am suggesting that if you can actually take your foot off the pedal of your expectations and just let the car, which is your life, just coast, what you find is that um, less energy is invested in things that you cannot change and more time will be focused on things that you already have even when what you have is too little. Now I'm reminded by the beautiful story of the widow. Um, the master and his disciples are stood in the temple and here comes in all the people uh, to give an offering. And the wealthy people come and they give much. And a poor old woman comes and she gives very little. And the disciples say to the master, well, no, we should stop this, young, this older woman from giving because she is poor. Let her take the money, let her take the pennies back with her because she needs it. The master says, well, of all the people who have gave today, she has given the most because she, she gave from what she did not have. She gave from the little she had, whereas other people gave from their generosity. They gave from their much and therefore just on a proportionate basis, she gave more. But you cannot rob her of the opportunity to give. But more importantly, you cannot rob the receiver of the opportunity to receive. The energy flows, which is part of the reason why, and I'm going to segue, the whole idea of taxation um, is a bad thing. Um, when we say one group of people have the ability to give and therefore they must give much, and another group do not have the ability to give and they should give nothing. And what we don't realise is that in order to have an abundance of blessing. The energy of life has to pass through you. And whenever something comes into you or to your bosom, bosom and you keep it, it's like the Dead Sea. The water starts to stagnate. There is no harvest that can come from that. If what you have is not a harvest, in other words, if it's not bountiful, then it's an indication that it is a seed, something to be sown to get much more. For example, I give you some corn on the cob. Um, cob and it's just one piece. You have a choice. You can take the seed and you can plant it. And if you plant it and water the soil and nurture the soil, perhaps in a summer or two, uh, in an autumn or two rather, you might have an abundance um, of, of corn. You eat what you have if what you have is enough. You sow what you have if what you have is little. Depression is simply an indication that you're going against that principle of sowing and reaping. In other words, you're not happy about the little that you have, but you're refusing to sow from that little. And I know it's difficult to understand and get head around, but you can see people who are in the midst of struggle. It's funny. In the midst of struggle, some people still look towards the heavens or look down towards the earth and say thank you. In the midst of their trouble. Why? Because they're given from what they have. And they're given from the little that remains. Whereas some other people have unfulfilled expectations. Oh, I should have had this. Oh, I should have had that. I have come across people who 
taking their lives um, for reasons that those who were left behind uh, cannot fathom. I mean, these are matters that are so trivial. Um, they are loved, they are cared for, uh, they have people around them that really, 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 really look up to them. And, and the person who takes their life has this expectation that is unfulfilled, um, that they haven't been good providers, they haven't been good protectors, they haven't professed the love as much as they should have, they haven't been the priests of the family. And, and you think about it and you realise this has nothing to do with what you have left. This has everything to do with your unfulfilled expectations. You've placed this burden on yourself that was never placed on you by the heavens and that was never placed on you by the earth. Caesar's world doesn't demand too much. It simply says, give unto Caesar what is his and give unto the Lord what is theirs. And you've heard me say before that the yoke the universe places on the individual is not too heavy. It's for your shoulders. It's, 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 it's described and detailed and designed for your load is for you. In other words, it helps you become a better person. But we can have the option of taking more load and wearing another yoke that is not ours. And therefore we find it kills us. Why? Because it's not designed for our necks or our shoulders or our hearts. And therefore depression for a small minority of people can be resolved very easily through gratitude through being thankful and by reducing and lowering the rules that you expect the universe to operate by and even more importantly by extending some grace to yourself. Some people place too much of a burden on themselves. You see, you cannot extend your life by one extra day by worry. You cannot change the outcome of things by one millimeter by worry. Worry is the wrong use of the imagination. By faith and imagination, you can. Through hope and expectation, you will. But the key thing is to keep in mind that gratitude is the antidote for all of suffering. It's all the antidote of depression. And therefore, if you can just step, take a step back away from your unfulfilled expectations and stop expecting from the universe, stop expecting from life and from people and from God or from without and just simply say I'm going to play a game and in this game I'm the one who is the abundant one and I would just give I would give up my time and I'll give up my kindness I'll give up my gratitude and I'll give up my sincerity I'll give a smile but every day I will give something and as I interact with people I will give sometimes it's a good thought sometimes actually it's a good deed Sometimes it might be a good word, but just focus on giving. Try that for just one week. Don't, don't worry about your expectations. Just focus on the other. If you want to be the greatest in the kingdom, the, the master said, then you have to be the servant. And those who serve are those who receive. Now, you don't always receive where you sow. Sometimes it takes years. And in my experience, the sowing comes from a different soil. This is not uh, the classic approach to seed and soil. You sow the seed, the harvest comes from wherever it comes. And I think for some people, the depression we feel is that we've sown and sown and sown and we're getting nothing back. Some people would say, well, I've been good. I've been kind. I've been generous. I've been forgiving. I've been uh, abundant in, in reaching out to people, but nothing comes my way. I would simply say as follows as I close today's session. <laughs> Worry not about the season of harvest. Just focus on the task of sowing. And what you find is that in due time, you know, like the great writer says, the harvest is much. The harvest is abundant for the workmen a few. A lot of people um, take the path of least resistance and they get out of the pictures of life way too early. I mean, just as the harvest is about to come, we give up. Just as the harvest is about to begin, we lose faith. 
And just as we are about to receive our abundance, our birthright, our promises, we walk away. We take a path of worry, doubt, fear, anxiety, depression, sometimes even death. All of those pathways are not necessary if you're willing to recognize that ingratitude was the first sin. Now, let me go into theology and biblical um, stories for just a second. The first sin committed was not disobedience. If you believe the story and the story writer's um, message, it wasn't at the garden. It wasn't the disobedience that was the first sin. The first sin was ingratitude. Before disobedience took place, there was a seed that was sown that said, you are not good enough. Ah, did God say you can eat of all the trees, but not of the one in the middle of the garden? Yes, he did. Well, you see, God realized if you had actually eaten that tree, you would be like him. You would have wisdom and abundance in understanding. And so what you found is, well, at that point in time, a seed was sown. Little did the two people involved recognize that they were made in the image of God. In other words, that whatever they wanted, they were. Ingratitude began at the moment where they started to entertain the idea that they were less than they were. If you want to get rid of depression, you have to get rid of ingratitude. And you have to start to see yourself as someone who is blessed or as someone who is actually destined for a life of blessing in this life or in the life to come. Depression is a sign of unfulfilled expectations.